which led to the expansion of the mandate of the Community Court of Justice to enforce the human rights of the people of the member states of the Economic Community of West African States. That's the course. Mr. Bashar Kosar, through public interest litigation, the federal parliament's law firm successfully stopped the execution of 12 kids who were convicted for armed robbery by military tribunal in Lagos, the takeover of the Nigerian Bank Association by the military junta, the prosecution of the Arabistan Union of the Nazis as and the criminalization of rights by the people. The arrest and detention of our members in lieu of one criminal suspect and the indefinite suspension of the individuals from the executive house. Apart from the promotion of, promotion of political and civil rights, every parliament of law fair has ensured the recognition and protection of the social economic rights of the general people by local and international governments. Thus, the courts have compared the right of Nigeria to protest without police permit, the right of police women to marry without permit, the right of every Nigerian child to free and compulsory basic education, the right of the parents to education law, the right of privileged citizens to access loans or payments without collateral, the right of citizens to the protection of the parents of the and the right of the people of the only political community in the Eternal Regional to a safe and healthy environment. As great personal cause and discomfort, very parallel, relentlessly battles for oppressive ruling class. On account of his human rights activities and activities, he was arrested and detained in police and prison custody on several occasions. From 1984 to 1998, by the former military dictators. His passport was seized while he was charged with criminal offenses, including unlawful assembly, incitement, sedition, and treasonable felony, but was never convicted by any court. In 1996, he was declared a prisoner of conscience by Amnesty International. <laughs> As a good honor for his consistent respect of human rights and rule of law, his many awards include the American Bank Association International, International Human Rights Award of 1986, the Defender of the Year Award for the International League of Human Rights, New York, in the two power, for the Improvement Leadership Award, Ghana, in 2003. Nine outstanding leadership by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts State, City, House of Representatives, and Boston Council, in the United States of America, in the next year. The prestigious Bernard Simon, Simon's Human Rights Award by the International Bar Association in 2008. Knight of Freedom Award by the Legal Aid Council of Nigeria 2009. The Adipo Every Lifetime Award on Human Rights of the Honor of Labor Foundation, Nigeria, and in 2011. Promoter of Human Rights to the School in Africa by the National Human Rights Commission in 2015. Wale Shoye Human Rights Defender Award in 2020. Apart from these states, as a member of the National Executive Committee of the Nigeria Bar Association and General Bar Council, Kevin Pollard was the president, Committee for the Defense of Human Rights, 1996 to 1998. He was the Secretary General of the African Bar Association between 2000 and 2002. He was president of the West African Bar Association between 2004 and 2009. Thank you.
During his days as a student in the university, he continued in his God work even as a youth boss. Then, a year after his call to back, during his national youth service, he succeeded in securing the pay of several university as students of the violence who were arrested and were openly remanded in prison courts for protesting for their rights. Our guest of honor and speaker is Okiti Gogo. Okiti Mai Mai of Unity. I was the Wabo Unity of the Wabo, an apostle of justice, whose slavery is for Max, a man who does not easily collapse the force of the enemy. 
Members of council, members of the university community, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, permit me to thank the friend who has just uh, attempted to read my CV. Thank you very much. Secondly, Mr. Bachelor, permit me to apologize very, very tremendously for my inability to make my presentation available before today. But I assure you, in the next 24 hours, you will have it. I must confess that I got a summons to be in this university from my friends here in Nassau. Even though I was preoccupied with many papers, particularly briefs in the Supreme Court, but it was an invitation I could not reject. Here from the university in the last couple of months, I thought maybe the program would go to that I was only called a few days ago. That was why I tried to put down a few points, actually, in the last 48 hours. Uh, let me begin by thanking the university community for giving it fit to extend an invitation to me. In the university community, I'm not competent to deliver a lecture. What I have therefore done is to put out a few points, which will form a basis for the cross fertilization of ideas this morning. And I intend to challenge you, the university community, to, and at the end of my presentation, I do hope that you will take up the challenge of contributing your quota to the development of this society much more than you are currently doing. And when I say you, I don't mean this university alone, no, I'm talking of the entire university community. Amen. Luckily for all of us, we are now operating under a democratic or a civilian government. I would say we are operating under a civilian dispensation. Whereby you can express your views without any fear that you might be arrested and detained. Just to let you appreciate the level of freedom that we currently enjoy. One of the military dictators, Akim Babangira, was not prepared to leave. He had given himself a terminal date of October 1990. 
So immediately it shifted to 1992. It shifted to 1993. At that stage, we decided that this guy had to go. So we printed some posters. Babangida must go. Put his photograph and cross him with the right ink. The late Chief Ganepawa, the late Dr. Bayer Kolonso, and my humble self were arrested and charged with treasonable felony. Uh, that word, those words, you may not understand what they mean, but I'll tell you them. We're captured in Lagos and taken to Kuche prison. And we asked them, what have we done? He said, you express your opinion dangerously. <laughs> So we detained for about six weeks before we were taken to court. Two other people were asked to join us. The then man's leader, I think Olusha Gumayes, and Abba Manjola and Akanami. So five of us were taken to a chief magistrate court in Guabalaga in the federal capital territory. And before we knew it, a charge was read. That we have conspired to overthrow the Babangida regime. Civilians trying to overthrow a military dictator. <laughs> but Ghani, the late power, a lawyer of lawyers. <laughs> took the charge. And what to the judge, my lord, those who should be charged with reasonable felony are in the presidential bill. And the judge said, please, what do you mean? So my lord, those who overthrew a democratically elected government on December 31st, 1983, are in power now. So those are the guys that should be brought here and tried to do something for them. The judge had to beg them, please. <laughs> Don't let them accuse me <laughs> of listening to your reasonable <laughs> submission. <laughs> now, when it was my turn, I simply directed the attention of the judge to section 41 of the Criminal Code Act which provides for treason defense. And the section says, any person who forms an intention to remove the president of his country during his time of office, otherwise than by constitutional means. So my lord, the guy presenting himself as the president of my country was never elected for it by anybody. He didn't have a big sum of office. And so he couldn't be removed by constitutional means. Therefore, this law is not meant for Babangida and Co. Now, we went on and on and on for about five hours to talk. I graduated. At that time, we were only asking for bail. But we knew. If we subjected the regime to a trial that day, that would be the end of it. And indeed, after that case, the government lawyer ran away until the case was struck out without a fall. Lack of political The point I make is that nobody, nobody can charge us with treasonable federal law for discussing here today. For that reason, I'm going to be very frank with you. Good and frank in the interest of all of us. Therefore, my privilege to stand before you to address a congregation of the most educated 
are most intellectually developed persons. And the new brief of the educated that have been nurtured, cultured, and aggressive for the society. This universe, because a university is a universe, universitas, a center of ideas, has been designed to be self sufficient and holistic. Humanity is yet to develop any community that is more vast and better educated than the university. No other institution has been developed by humanity that is better than the university. That is why in all countries with their heads firmly on their shoulders, the professor is a king or a queen. As I can see, female professors here, they are queens. Why the men are kings? After professing in a specialized field, what can be hired? Or who can be hired than the professor? Even in the university, anybody higher than the professor, such as the vice chancellor, is merely engaged in administrative duty. That is the difference between the vice chancellor and other professors. Because he is serving the responsibility to discharge some administrative duty. That was why a professor, such as Ojeki Diaboyabe, a pleasant memory, had to be cajoled, had to be persuaded to accept to be a vice chancellor of the University of Israel, now of Abba Mawolo He said, no, I can't leave my classroom. But it was needed at that material time. So it was persuaded. For a four-year tenure, after three years, he said, I can go on no more. And he went back to teach at the University of Ibadan. He resigned after three months. Not because of any fraud or whatever. He was an intellectual in every material particular. But he said, I love to go back to teach. Mention Ife reminds me of the roles of two great political leaders in this part of the world. She forbade me a whole hour the first premier of Western region, who made mass education the primary objective of his administration. By breaking through social inequality in the society, it is fitting that the University of Israel was named after him. Chief Samuel Ladoki Akitola Awolowo's immediate successor continued the administration's focus on education. It was actually, and this is very, very important for our history, it was actually Akitola that built the University of Italy in 1962. Even though Even though the idea was conceptualized by Obafemi Awolawo, it is therefore equally fitting and proper that this university has given it to be named after Ladoki Akitola. Knowledge and tertiary institutions. About 4,500 years ago, Africans built the Great Pyramid of Giza in today's Egypt. 4,500 years ago. That pyramid was 
146.6 meters of 481 feet high, making it the tallest man made structure for more than 3,800 years. Built with an estimated 2.3 million large blocks, weighing 6 million tons, it had a 230.6 meter base. The pyramid in Giza, in, in Giza was one of the 118 pyramids built with 80 of them in today's Sudan. The first and Tesla CEO Elon Musk, who is leading a space travel, talked about the pyramid and tweeted in 20, August 2022, aliens must have built this pyramid. He couldn't believe that Africans built the pyramid. He just could not believe that Africans did it. But they did. The knowledge, technology, and skill to build the pyramid existed thousands of years ago, with Egypt establishing tertiary institutions thousands of years before Europe and America. Egyptians established tertiary institutions called the Pyramid House of Life at as far back as 2000 BC, before Christ. Plato, regarded as the father of Western philosophy, born around 428 BC, actually studied in Egypt for 13 years. Pythagoras, born 570 BC, studied philosophy, geometry, and medicine in Egypt for 22 years. Thales, the first Greek philosopher, born in 546 BC, studied in Egypt. Hippocrates, Hippocrates, father of Western medicine, studied medicine for seven years in Egypt. If must knew of this African tertiary institution, which existed thousands of years ago, he might not have thought that aliens, rather than humans, built the pyramids. Social inequalities in Africa. Abroad, I prefer to reach you to challenge you, the university community in Nigeria, that if Africans could do it thousands of years ago, why can we not do the same and perhaps greater today? But we'll discuss why it is no longer possible in a moment. Social inequality, which is unequal access, the basic needs of work of the society is quite prevalent in Nigeria's society today. It is a sea mystery, social inequality. It's a sea mystery with poverty. Unequal access cuts across health, shelter, education, employment, and income. The World Bank in 2022, his Poverty and Prosperity Report said Nigeria contributed 3 million people to global extreme poverty and that every minute over 6 Nigerians enter the extreme poverty bracket. Today, Nigeria warehouses the largest concentration of poor people in the world. Nigeria is the global capital of poverty today. In spite of our enormous human and natural resources, again we will find out later why we are poor. The country Nigeria ranked 403 out of 121 countries in the 2022 Global Hunger Index. An additional 1 million Nigerians were pushed into poverty between June and November 2021. While the number of poor people in 2022 
I decreased to 91 million. In a under a government that claimed that it will make 100 million people prosper. But that government has put over 100 million today into poverty. The 2022 Global Hunger Index report showed that 12.7% of Nigerians are undernourished, suffering from partial corner. 6.5% of under five children are wasted. 31.5% of children under five are stunted. While 11.4% of our children die before their 55 days. The August 2022 UN Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, report indicated that Nigeria now has about 20 million out of school children roaming the street. You see some of them selling wares. When I will have one. If we fail to take care of the children of the poor, they will go up to harass the children of the rich. It's that report further indicated that there are 244 million children and youth between the ages of 6 and 18 worldwide who are out of school. But Nigeria has 20 million, and that is the highest figure of any country in the world. The estimates published in the UNESCO Institute for Statistics and the Global Education Monitor indicate that Sub-Saharan Africa, with 98 million out of school children, indicate that we are in trouble. While in some countries, when your child turns six, before your child turns six, and you haven't registered your child, the Ministry of Education authority will give you a call or send official to your house. Because they have the records of every child born, so you will be contacted. You haven't registered your child. This is the implication. You will be charged before the court for not sending your children to school. I'm going to challenge you today to know there are two laws in Nigeria that have made education free and compulsory from primary to junior secondary school. Can you hear me? Two laws. The compulsory Universal Basic Education Act of 2004 and the Child's Rights Act of 2003. The latter has been domesticated by 34 out of 36 states in Nigeria. Or your state is one of the states. So, no child should be roaming the street in your state. Same way, with all the dangers involved, I'm a don't tell A lot of them are captured and raped. So we must now speak from today. We must join issues with our government. Pay the lawyers in town. This is what Fallon has said. Can you get the lawyers here to go to court and ensure that every child in the commercial area is registered in school? You know the advantage. Do you know? If every child is put in school, the people in government will have less money to steal. Because you have to provide for them. We have a case in court, 25 and the Attorney General of the to compare the 36 state government and the federal government to remove all children from school, I mean, from the street, and put them in school. That case is ongoing. The Nigeria Economic Summit estimates that this year, 2023, unemployment rate will hit 37%. The, this in, inflation rate in states, inflation rate will average 20.5% in the year. I think that, and I could, 
food inflation, food will remain the fundamental driver of inflation due to enduring impact of flooding, increased production cost due to increased cost of credit, insecurity and displacement, existing fuel shortages and the removal of fuel subsidies will continue to increase the core component, especially transportation. And to compound this crisis, you have the currency scarcity caused by, well, I would prefer to say the Guarani regime. But when you single out an official, you cover up the atrocity of the government. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like the sign that if the Supreme Court has not intervened, it will have been a disaster by now. If I ask you, where are the new Nara notes? Where are they? They are not there. You know why? You know why? Nigeria does not have the capacity to print the new Nara notes. So, MFLA went abroad, visited three countries, I think France, Germany, and United Kingdom. And they told him, you have to queue up. Why did you announce it? Why you don't have the new Nara notes yet? So the Nigeria is queuing up. They printed, they collected from all of them over 3 trillion Naira. What they have printed is less than 500 million Naira. So what I did, I wrote to the Central Bank under the Freedom of Information Act. Mr. Emefili, can I know how much you have printed? You know what he said? He wrote a very polite letter. Tell Mr. Fanny, your letter received. We are attending to the letter. Yes, over a month ago. Second one, Mr. Emefili, can I know how much you have given to each of the banks? Because that they say we were told the banks were holding the money. Why did you do it? At the same time, they said the politicians are mop up the money again. And I said, Thank you. How much have you given to each bank? Then they are Mr. Fala. Your letter is receiving attention. <laughs> so, what are their photos? I've just given out instructions to my lawyers yesterday. See, this guy is leaving very soon. Can we go to court and compel him? And I mean it. We are going to compel him to tell Nigerians how much have been printed and why he subjected us to excruciating economic pain. The National Primary Health Care is a health care development agency. In its 2022 report, it had this to say, reimagining primary health care in Nigeria indicated that six out of ten Nigerians lack access to quality primary health care, and that only 43% of Nigerians have access to quality primary health care. I don't agree with the figure. Because you yourself know here that the majority of Nigerians, including many of you in the US, have no access to basic health care. But it's not enough for us to mourn our fate. By virtue of section 14 of the National Health Act, of 2014, the government shall, shall fund basic primary health care for Nigeria. But that is not being done. Again, we are caught. To compel the government to carry out its duty under the law. This government is going, no one did under that law. The president cannot travel out of the country for medical care without a report by a hospital in that this man cannot be treated locally. So most of the time that Buhari travel abroad, 
to treat earache <laughs> or whatever is the committee illegality. But we want to make it the last time that the president of our country will travel out of the country and ignore the air facilities in Nigeria. And all of us will have to be part of the campaign because it is unconstitutional. Because it's discriminatory. You can't go abroad to take care of your health and allow the masses of our people to die of preventable diseases in Nigeria. So we have to decide whether we want to have one country or two countries. One for the rich and the other one for the poor. Now, I can go on and on with the figure, but I, I don't want to make you sad after leaving this place today. So let's look at the causes of social inequality in Nigeria. There is a mainstream view that there are social inequalities and poverty in Nigeria. The reasons given include lack of free markets, fraudulent, lack of free markets, low labor absorption, population growth, structural constraints, market failure, weak economic performance, non mechanized farming, reduced cash crop production, overvalued currencies. Lack of adequate aid, low human capital health, and something. The conclusion is that poverty cannot be eradicated. It can only be alleviated or reduced. The condition of this school of thought is that there is no need to tackle extreme poverty. All we need to do, you can't eradicate poverty. All you need to do is to try and reduce so that for the majority of our people poverty is their life. When Christians say it's not my portion, members of the ruling class are saying that poverty is the portion of the majority of my people. And I'm sure my Christians will say I reject it in Jesus. Christ. I was once in a prison, Mawadashi prison in Jigawa State. Abasha arrested me on one occasion and put me in detention for 10 months in one year. You know they will just come and grab me. What have I done? They won't tell you. So for 10 months I was in that prison. Now every day, the prisoners will come to greet me. What can they decide? You know the meaning of rank again? No, you don't. You saw it a big man, may you live long. So I then call them. I don't like this type of greeting. Can we say from tomorrow, Rami did it. May we all live long. So okay. The following day they came again. He said, Rank again. What happened? She didn't wear for it. That is she will have say no Oga. Listen to me. Oga, I want to Why? My name is. say no, Oga. Now, now big man will live long. If poor man live long, na poverty, na more, na more suffer. It was difficult for me to convince them. That poverty has not been, nobody has been destined to be poor. Do you understand? Me? So before I left the place, it was rank every everybody. I couldn't stop. The, the late economy, Bate Olimade, posited a dialectical alternative to this fraudulent school that says poverty cannot be eradicated. In the 1975 paper titled The 
dialectics of exploitation, poverty and power in Nigeria. But they argue that the issues are not primarily economic, but power relations in the new colony. It's not about economy, it's about politics. Who gets what, how and when? Do you understand me? Who gets what, how and when? In Nigeria today. No, let me finish with that thing. And he had this to say. One of the leaders of ASU in those days. The neo colonial alliance in the protection of foreign capitalist interests in the country and the guarantee of the predominant economic and political power of the domestic issuers. The imperialists require cheap sources of raw materials, especially now that oil top the list of such resources. Secure markets for their cheap manufacturers, which they push on the country at exploitative price, as well as continual repatriation, repatriation of huge profit from the new colony. But they went and on and on to let us know why we are poor. You have my paper. The subservient nature, is my own idea, of the Nigerian political elite as posited by Oli model is reflected in his acceptance of the development model advanced by the West, which advocates to the neo colonies the role of producers of raw materials and the West manufacture. So in Nigeria today, we produce and sell oil in its crude form. We sell oil in its crude form almost 60 years after the discovery of Olo Ipiri. And then we import petroleum products to the country. Nigeria is the only oil producing country that does not have a functional refinery. This regime has been in power. Bradley said when he was campaigning, he was a minister of petroleum for three years. If I go there, I build the country's four refinery. I will fix them and give more. Nothing has happened. And that is why we are in trouble. Now, at the beginning of this address, I mentioned two past Nigerian leaders. And I'm coming back to them. Mr. Sawolawa and Akitola, or chiefs. In confronting the reality of social inequalities, if the worst time Nigeria they govern, unlike now, in the Western Nigeria, those two people governed. The action group, the Apache, had a program called LMA, Life More Abundant. Not, not poverty reduction, life more abundant. There was life. So they wanted it more for all of us. Under which they provided free education for the children of everybody. The rich and the poor. And the children were going to the same schools, public schools. I'm sure for the young people here, you'd be surprised to know that there was not a single private school at that time. In fact, it was unthinkable for you to talk of a private school. That access of for to education not only built a more cultured and educated population. It also vastly reduced social inequalities and led to vast employment opportunities. Just a life level. The party also had the free health for all program, which guaranteed access to health and generally better social service. The successor party, the Unity Party of Nigeria, in the second report, continued the same way. I will illustrate with one administration, the Jackson Day, I think Jackson Day administration in Lagos. Jackson Day within four years 
from 1979 to 83, increased the primary schools in Lagos State from 605 to 812, and pupils from 434,545 to 533,001, half a million. On the average, we built 52 new primary schools every year. Within four years, it doubled the number of secondary schools in the state from 105 to 223. That is building an average of 30 secondary schools per year. It's currently constructed 11,729 classrooms with a maximum of 40 children per class at that time. In the same period, the administration built Lagos State University last year, which then had an enrollment of 35,000 full time students. I understand you have about 35,000 students here now. This was 1983. On shelter, that they built 30,000 housing units for the poor. It's for you. For you. But mind you, that's why they never travel for one day. Never travel at home. So one day. That one day was living in the south at the Nuclear Jew for four years. In his own private house. He was riding his own private car, Toyota Crown, which he had bought before he became a governor. For four years. The most gigantic project ever embarked upon by state government, the Metro Line project. That one day I paid for it. Before it was cancelled illegally by the Baba Buhari administration in 1984. Now, that was a state government. Its own children and the children of the poor were attending the same schools in the So, why? And he never traveled abroad for medical treatment for four years. So, he had to ensure that the hospitals were in good shape. Do you understand me? I'm telling you this so that you know why we're in trouble now. If you live as a governor for four years now, if you retire on a jacket, you are entitled to a bond. You are the salary of a governor, sitting governor for life. Wait a minute. You'll be given two new cars every four years. You are entitled to a security personnel. Medical treatment for you and your family members for now. Oh yeah. Even if you do four years or eight, then you will have a house in the state where you go back and one in Abuja where you never come. <laughs> Some of them prefer to monetize the houses, so they want a billion or two billion. So that's why we are poor. So you must know that those who rule us have created a new society for themselves. While for the rest of all, and that's why there's no money for education. A few people are honored the resources of the country. Now, to inform you for that, the same people, members of the ruling class, loot the treasury recklessly. It's still our common one. One of them accusing us of going on strike two years ago. He's currently standing trial. You know for how much? Former Academy General of the Federation. He's standing trial for the criminal diversion of one hundred and nine billion dollars. One person Are you with me? Now, some of them, some of them, some of them have cornered our entire way. Either to, to be of privatization or concession. Privatization. You want to sell this university, this building, a public building. You know what they do? They will take a loan from the bank and use this building as a collateral. No, so no cover from their own pocket. 
They call it privatization. So what they are doing is after they have taken the loans from the banks, the banks were going to collapse. They called the loans as they call toxic, toxic, toxic. The banks were going to collapse in 2008. So they quickly rushed it. The government set up an agency. I'm sure you are reading about Ancon. Ancon was set up by the government to buy off the toxic loans of the rich. Meanwhile, the poor, they are losing their own houses for, fail, for failure to pay the loans. But for the rich, the government set up a special agency. Buy all the loans and negotiate with them. How much can you pay? If you can't pay, okay. We will give you this bill. Now, they call it Asset Management Corporation of Nigeria. Ancon. You think it's a private agency? No. It's a government agency set up for the rich. What have they done about that? Today, what you can do? I'm going to the back to recover the sum of 5.4 trillion owed by just about 372. Now that's not enough. In the last five years, the Buhari administration has granted duty waivers of 16 trillion naira to Dan Kote and Co. You know the video of the two ever? You and I are importing vehicles. You will not pay import duty. I will pay. We are going to the same market. So they call a few members of the company of Europe to give you the two ever 16 trillion. Why there's no money to fund education. I think that is not enough. They tell us government has no business in business. Have you not heard that? It's not the business of the government to get involved in business. That is the most fraudulent statement that anybody can make. This economy, quote, the government has put in more money than the private sector. In fact, the government, like I've just told you now, subsidizes the private sector. All our electricity companies, 18 of them, were given to Jonathan's friends, who didn't know anything about electricity. They went to the banks to take loans. They put in service the loans. The government is taking those companies back to I'm going. This government that couldn't be the refinery for them. Call that to the that Can we do business? That would just say, I have a problem completing this refinery. What do you want? This government came, took a loan of $2.7 billion and gave you that budget. You see my paper, and I will let you know my sources. And, and, Mr. Dango, when you complete your refinery, we shall be giving you 300,000 barrels of food oil per day. And what is our interest in that refinery? They say 20%. Who has funded that agreement? I don't know. This, that is the most successful fiscal plan in Nigeria. When they close the border, you know when they close the borders in Nigeria a few years ago, they allowed them to do and boar to be going and out. The closure did not affect them. That's those who say government has no interest in business. Now, almost at the tail end of the Buhari administration, I will refuse to listen to all the labor union. The government has just now decided to feed the refiners. 
1.5 billion dollars has been set aside to fix Portacol refinery. Worry refinery, 584 million dollars. Kaduna refinery, 748 million dollars. That's about 3 billion dollars to fix refineries that are coming to us. So where do we go from here? I am telling you. And what do they want to do? If they fix the refinery, they want to sell them or we will not allow them. Are you with me? We won't allow our cultivator to sell everything. Because if you want to sell, sell them in cash. And let those who want to buy fix them, but they know those guys have no money. And that's why the government wants to fix it for them. I'm sure you have been reading about uh, oil theft. So that you know where we are poor. How can you? A government say that people are stealing oil, we don't know them. You are not a government. <laughs> because there are technological devices to know how much oil is produced in it, how much you are taking out to where when Nigeria has refused to acquire the meters to know so that we can know how much oil that we produce. Out of about 36 stamina, I think they have meters for about 20. The 16, where there are no meters. That is where the bulk of the steel is. Do you understand? Punch has just reported that in the last one year, Nigeria lost 2.3 trillion to oil theft. See, Guari came on board since 2015. The government has wasted 30 billion dollars on the importation of food. Now, if you put these figures together, the government will have enough money to fix all our roads, guarantee free education at all levels, build modern and state of the art hospitals. But what have they done is for a few people to corner the wealth of the country and leave the rest of us in poverty. And that is why the challenge before us is how we can work together to get this country out of poverty. We have to abolish poverty, not reduce it, because it can be abolished. I know a country which has no oil, no cocoa, no gold, and this country also faces this small country faces the worst economic challenge because the U.S. has imposed sanctions on that country for about 60 years. And lastly, that country runs into serious weather problems every year. I'm talking of Cuba. Meanwhile, Cuba, in spite of our poverty, guarantees free education for everybody from primary to university. Free health care from primary to tertiary. Level. So anybody who is sick in Cuba, if I want to help you, that's not what they call family doctor. Every family knows his doctor. So they have got to a situation where a doctor will knock on the door. Is anybody sick in this house? The lifespan, the lifespan in that poor country is higher than that of the US. What I'm making that point is that it's not because the leaders are good, it is the system that is operating. So if you have a system of Eat or you are eating, like in the case of Nigeria, the government cannot abolish poverty. Cuba is in the tropics, like Nigeria. That country abolished 
malaria parasite in 1967. If you travel to Cuba today and you discover at the airport that you have malaria, you'll be quarantined so that you don't take malaria to town. Our government is part of our prayer has refused to ask the Cubans, can we have your medicine? Because America will not allow them. Because they can't sell their mosquito nets. If you abolish malaria, these are the problems we are going through as a group. And therefore going to conclude by touching on America. Which have always joined issues with the Asu. There's a body called Ted Fund. I'm sure you know about Ted Fund. It's a vice chancellor. We, through Asu, it was Asu that suggested to the government in 1992. And it took time to persuade the government can we impose education tax on companies? So when the government eventually allowed, we drafted the decree. It was a decree then. And the government passed it. What has happened to us? What has happened to the university community? The bulk of that money is it's not collected. Majority of companies in Nigeria do not pay the education tax. I therefore challenge us. You must have a committee that will go to CAC to get the list of incorporated companies in Nigeria. And you must find out which of them is not paid. So that every year, the government will not simply say this is how much we have collected. You must know yourself how much you've been collected. And I'm just suggesting to our soon leader. We can collect information through the Freedom of Information Act. Just this year, the government didn't know the implications. So we are going to write to them very soon of the Act of Asu. The government has just announced that we are doing very well in terms of tax collection. The government has just announced that we are right to collect taxes of only 5 trillion last year. Now it's 13 trillion this year. How does that reflect in text form? We are going to find out. Because just like your taxes are increasing, the allocation of text form is decreasing. So that if you collect that money, the business of saying, uh, Ladoke will collect this year, uh, the technical university will collect this year, will not have us. And we must work together on this area. The other one, terrible exploitation. Our children that are looking for admission, some of them try four or five times. And you have to pay every year. You understand? That? The money they collect every year runs to billions. And in these days of writing exams through objective questions, how much are you spending from that money? So I had a problem with uh, a camp registrar a few years ago. I discovered that in four years. About 24 billion was collected. And I wrote to the man, Mr. Registrar of Dan, can I know what you did with this money in the last four years? He ran to the Senate. And those ones, I'm sure they have some deal. They wrote me a bit for them. And you stand me as a patriot for raising this matter. But that in the last four years, the money for Japan was not released. So the entire money was spent. We took up the matter. The fellow and his children are currently standing trial for stealing figures. So why did the new man go there? You want to follow the part of your predecessor. Hello. So every year now, the man announces, Professor Lee,
This is how much we have made this year. In the last four years, they have given the federal government about 30 billion. But you know what I've done? I said, no, this money does not belong to the federal government. How can you collect money for my children who cannot get admission? You are now giving it to the federal government where the money will be stolen. So, what I've done, I complain, no? but I also try to pursue matters. I've just drafted a bill which has submitted to the House of Men. One of which should have dropped this bill. That the money made by the every year, the excess must go to 34. And as you. Asking on the part of this struggle. If I leave this struggle, the final one, let me tell you, it's not easy. You know what I mean? It's not easy to wait this struggle. You know what they do? They try to frustrate you. But I never get frustrated. But the road was very bad. This is my last story. Very bad. No, believe. I went to believe. For a case. And I almost had an accident. It was very bad. When I went to live, I went to court. Thou, please, thou shalt fix this road. Because the state of the road constituted a threat to my life. Some people were dying on the road. Government file an objection. And Mr. Fan, you have no local stand down. They didn't say the road was good, but that only the attorney general of the can file a case like that under what they call relator action. The child happens to be a new woman. Send Mr. Fan. I'm going to dismiss you. Which is you? I will win. If I don't win here, I will win outside. In striking out the case, he just said, after action. Henceforth, you have to bear your true name. I said, my Lord, of course, I knew what was it. What is my true name? Fala and I'm what Great Lord of God. I say, my Lord, in minding my own business, I must mind the business of the society. And I show you, sir, I'm a travel driver, I won't die on that road. But people are dying to me. But you know what I did after that? I went to the minister of works. I went to down the road leading to your town. What can you do? The following year, they put money in the budget to give them. I tell you that to let you know that we have to struggle and struggle and struggle. I have a son. And he complains a lot about the society. I have no, I don't blame him. But it's a product of the crisis of the society. So the last time I was discussing with this gentleman, he said, come. Don't get tired of Do you know the boy I'm talking about? Yes. I said, don't get tired. It's not like you know what you say. If you are being pursued by the most student, keep on trying. Because what you are around you are around I can understand. He mobilized people to let this town go. The young man mobilized young people to write this town to vote. They have free concern in Lagos and Africa. And your admission was your PVC. So that get people to write this. 
the election was his mind was And the boy has once the record, this I have to be first And how funny, gentlemen, have listened to this your record. It's like Ben also. If you are sued, if you are taken to court, who is going to defend you? <laughs> He said that you incited me to produce that. So if the suit, you are going to defend me. I said, what will be your defense? He said, you will need justification for Under the law, justification is a good defense in life and case. Do you understand me? Yes. Now the point I made. Now for young people in particular, the future is yours. And you have to defend your future. The management of this university, they ask you, and the students must get in touch with your colleagues. Because in every country, the university is a good people of ideas. And you must produce ideas that will make this society a better place. Mr. Bai Shantala, I thank you very much for the exhibition that I watched this month. When I was going to answer, a lot of things went through my mind. And I will discuss with you later, sir. With those resources that I saw there, your university cannot complain of lack of funds. <laughs> Mr. Vice Chancellor, you are producing weeks. I saw eggs. How? Mr. Vice Chancellor, in a society of no one bad culture, society. Every weekend, people slaughter cows. One now, some parts of the world, country, it's about 250,000 to 300,000. And I saw pigs, sir, all the malls, all the malls in the country, shop right, all of them. They want peace. They want meat. So you must engage in mass production of meat. And if you are ready to do this, I can make a promise. The government has set aside billions of naira. Encourage production agreement. Like this, I advise the chairman of council in Ifen a few years ago. And what? Why you are there? You must make a change. Now, what do you mean? Go to the central bank. They are giving out billions to agree. The vice chancellor. He was able to influence the university to collect about two billion for Greek. Another university. Which we also advise. They are currently processing six hundred million naira per. This money belongs to all of us, and so you must try as much as possible to justify your own request. For funding the agriculture in this university. And if you do that, you will have more than enough money. There's a country called Botswana, Botswana. The main source of the wealth of that country is agriculture. Meat production. Apart from supplying meat locally, that country has supermarkets in Europe. 
for supply of meat from Botswana. So this university can be a center for producing meat. So, must every year collect your due from the government. If there are problems, let us stop. <laughs> You know why? You know why? If you set up a university, you must fund it. And if it's not going to be funded, you must not do it. And if the reason is not justified, you must join it. You must fight it. There are battles you can't wait there. You can wait them outside there. I understand you are planning to have a faculty of law. Mr. Bashan Salah, you can tell me what can do, let me know. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. 
for sparing the time and for the commitments you are giving us today. That when we commence our law of accounting, whatever we can do, we are ready to do. You know that, sir. I want to use the opportunity to share the seminar for the 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 title to be here. It's not easy. Get the title to the It's not easy. are there. Millions of men. Not a kind of hundreds of colleagues of the university system. When started, he he wasn't pleased to address us. Well, it's not that he's not a piece of address us. In every respect. I'm like that, sir. That you can come down to this place to our final team to do this for us. Thank you, sir. Uh, once again, I'm so glad for the good job you have done since yesterday night. We have been on this calling and taking a look. I'm not going to talk about success. We've got it so far. Please let's give ourselves a round of applause for all of us. Thank you. I think we should appreciate it for that. You know, this is an extra set of sound of the I think that nothing is much stronger than what you are seeing here. Tell us the part of the group. So, how do we want to follow you? After Vice President and the Chairman of the Senate, to help us to show our love to our guest speaker. Come up, sir. I want to our guest speaker.